All right, our next concept in the unit of equilibrium is to understand acids and bases and concepts of acids and bases. Um, equilibrium primarily deals with weak acids and bases, which we'll talk about mainly next week. This week, we're just going to get accustomed to properties of acids and bases, how to calculate pH, and all that stuff. And then next week, we'll talk about weak acids and weak bases. And then finally, we'll finish off this unit talking about titrations. All right, first of all, for an acid and base, um, some general properties. Um, strong acids and bases are very conductive, and therefore they're electrolytic. Weak acids and weak bases are slightly conductive, and therefore are, are um, slight electrolytes, okay, or weak electrolytes. They produce a few amount of ions and produce uh, into, into solution. Strong acid bases produce lots of ions. Uh, bases feel slippery to the touch. When you rub them between your fingers, it feels very, very slippery, and that's because there's a reaction taking place which is dissolving part of your fat tissues in your skin. Um, reactions. Acids react with some metals, to and when they do, they produce hydrogen gas. Okay, Not all metals react with acids, but many of them do. Uh, group 1, group 2 metals react with acids. It isn't until you to, to get to the D and P block that some of the metals are unreactive to acids. Um, indicators, things that turn color based on the pH levels. If you use litmus paper, litmus paper turns red in acids, blue in bases. Easy to remember, blue, blue, pink, uh, base starts with a B, blue. Phenethalene is an indicator we used in one of our previous labs at the start of the year. Phenethalene is clear in acids. These are liquid. This would be a liquid that we'd add to the solution directly. If the solution is colorless, it's acidic. If it's pink, it's basic. Acids have a pH less than 7. Bases have a pH greater than 7. And one last thing, um, acidic things tend to have a sour taste to them, like, like uh, citric acid, like anything like lemon, oranges, grapefruit, citric fruits. And bases tend to be bitter to the taste. All right, a couple other things. Definitions. The first definition you need to know is the Arrhenius definition for acid and bases. Arrhenius says that it, an acid is a substance that produces... Okay, H plus in hydrogen ions in solution. Now, hydrogen ions are very um, unstable, and they tend to very quickly be reacted with a water molecule to produce hydronium. So a hydronium ion and an H plus are synonymous with one another. An increased hydronium ion is the same thing as an increase in a hydrogen ion. Okay, so acids produce hydronium ions in water. Bases, based on the Arrhenius definition, produces hydroxide ions in water. Now, the problem with this definition is not all acids and bases produce these in some reactions, and therefore this definition is a little bit too narrow, and so then we need it to increase and make it a little more generalized, and that's where said lowrys definition comes into place. In a said lowry acid, it is a substance that donates hydrogen ions in a reaction. So it's the substance that donates the H+. The base is the su substance that accepts the H+, or the hydrogen ion, in the reaction. So really, it's a, f it's a tug of war between the hydrogen ion. The substance that donates it is the acid, the substance that accepts it is the base. Okay. One last thing, what are strong acids and weak acids? A strong acid is a substance that completely dissociates into ions. And we can see the complete dissociation with a single-sided arrow. HCl is an example of a strong acid, and they completely ionize. Weak acids, like hydrofluoric acid, only partially dissociates, producing ions. This would be an example of weak acid. So the arrow is the big key here. Weak acids only partially dissociate. Strong acids completely dissociate, almost to an extent of 100%. Weak acids dissociate at a level of usually at 5% or less. Same thing with bases. Bases like sodium hydroxide, if it's a strong base, you'll see a single-sided arrow, and now it's producing hydroxide ions. All right, the next thing is to be able to look at an acid-base reaction and to be able to see 
and label who is the acid and who's the base. So if I look at the first reaction here, if I look at the reactants, HCl and H2O, then I examine the products. How did the products form? What did the reactions, reactants do to form the products? Well, you should be able to quickly identify here that the HCl gives the H2O an H+. And because HCl donates the H+, based on Bronsted-Lowry's definition, this would be classified as the acid. Water, then, is classified as the base because it accepted the proton. Now, this acid down here, the acid forms a conjugate base. and the So when after the acid donates the proton, it, had, it now becomes what's called a conjugate base. It now forms a particle that has more basic properties than itself, and therefore acts and more behaves more like a base. The base, by accepting the proton, now forms a conjugate acid. So on the product side, we now also form another acid and base. So HCl, by doting the proton, now becomes the conjugate base, which is called, which we label CB, conjugate base, and H2O becomes a conjugate acid with the hydronium ion. All right. So for every acid base or Bronsted Lowry acid base reaction, we produce two acids and two bases, one each side. So we call these acid base pairs. So the two acid base pairs in that first reaction is HCl and Cl minus would be one acid base pair. And then the other acid base pair would be H3O plus and H2O. An acid base pair is simply separated by a single proton, a single H plus. Not two H pluses, just a single H plus. So if you properly identify the acid base pairs, the only difference between the two should be a single H plus. All right, I'd like you to pause the lecture right now, and now for the other two reactions, I would like you to label who the acid is, who the base is, the conjugate acid, and the conjugate base. This is a key concept you'll be able to do on the national exam, so please do that now. All right, hopefully you labeled the following in the second reaction, the NH3, the ammonia as the base. It accepts the H plus from the water. Water now becomes hydroxide ions, which is the conjugate base of water. And NH3 becomes NH4 plus, which is the conjugate acid of NH3. HCl in the last reaction is an acid, NH3 is a base. Uh, HCl donates the proton to NH3, forming NH4 plus, which is the conjugate acid. And the HCl becomes the conjugate base. Cl minus is the conjugate base. The chloride ion is the conjugate base of HCl. Okay? All right. Um, you notice that water, water in reactions one and two, in one case the water acted as an acid. In the second reaction it acted as a base. Or vice versa, excuse me. The first reaction acted as a base and the second reaction as acid. A substance that is able to be both an acid and a base is called amphiprotic. So just a vocabulary word, amphiprotic, like water, is a chemical compound that can behave both as an acid and a base. And therefore, in order to be amphiprotic, it has to have, a, it has to have hydrogen present in it. But then it also accepts protons and also um, can give protons, depending upon if it's put with a stronger acid or a stronger base. One last thing. Both of these reactions are double-sided. So if I look at that first reaction with HCl... And water, the HCl is donating the proton to H2O, but on the right side, the hydronium ion donates the H plus to Cl minus for the reaction to go backwards. So on both sides, there's a donation of a proton, and the reaction has the ability to go both ways, or to be reversible. So it's really both sides are competing for the H plus side. And we find out the side which has the stronger acid and base, the stronger acid and base will always force the reaction to the side of the weaker acid and base. So the stronger acid and base will always be on the same side the weaker acid and base will be on the other side. And the side that, the side that is, has more production of them 
are the weaker ones. The stronger S in a base, there will be very little of them left because they force the reaction to form the weaker S in a base. So consider the weaker S in a base not to be able to donate the proton as easily, and therefore it doesn't occur as, as often. Okay, so we look at it down here. If the conjugate base is has a greater attraction for the proton, the A minus, then the reaction will shift or will lie farther to the left. If the water is a greater attraction for the proton, then it'll shift to the right, like here. Okay, so if water has got a greater attraction for the proton than Cl minus, which is the case in this in example, the reaction will shift further to the right than to the left. Okay? Forms a conjugate acid. Page two of the pack, it just goes over some different properties we'll utilize throughout the unit. One thing for this section right now is the bottom one, which shows as we go up the graph on the left side, these are the stronger acids. You'll notice that HCl is the strongest acid identified on the left side of the reaction. And vice versa, it goes the opposite. The further down on the product side, we end up having a stronger base. So we get a relationship here. The stronger the acid, its conjugate base is a weaker base. So the stronger the acid, the weaker its conjugate base. Vice versa, the weaker the acid, the stronger and stronger its conjugate base is. So that's a relationship that is very useful for you understanding this unit. And look up HSO4. And HSO4 is right here. And the other substance was HCO3. These were the two acids identified. You'll notice that HSO4 is higher up and therefore is a stronger acid. All right. The next thing is the dissociation equation for acids. Acids, when they dissociate, they produce ions. Okay. Now, again, if it's a strong acid, you'll see a single-sided arrow. And what I would strongly recommend is actually include water in all of these association equations. Because as I said before, H plus is a very unstable particle. And the way to stabilize it is by it reacting with water and forming the hydronium ion. So I'd strongly recommend that whenever you do dissociation equation for this unit, for acids or bases, that you include water as a reactant. The water will accept the proton from the acid forming hydronium ions. If it's a weak acid, you'll see a double-sided arrow, so the reaction go back and forth. Okay, It doesn't dissociate completely. Strong acids do. Strong acids have very weak. So HCl is a very strong acid. Cl- is an extremely weak conjugate base and therefore does not really accept protons very much, if at all. It really is almost a neutral particle. All right. All right, so for, it says write the simple dissociation equations for the following substances. Um, and as I said, I should have probably took out the word omitting. I'd like you to include water here. All right, so HCl plus water. Since it's a strong acid, HCl will completely donate its proton to water. And pro water will accept that proton forming hydronium ions. And chloride ions. That would be the dissociation of HCl into water. Okay, And it's a complete dissociation, almost 100% complete. The other two substances are weak acids and bases. Why don't you do the same thing, but instead, but for both of these, you just need to use a double-sided arrow. But real quickly, do the dissociation equation for each of these substances in water. All right, hopefully you wrote the following reactions, and I'm going to pause the lecture for a second. All right, so as we can see here again, um, all these substances, if they ask for the weak acid dissociation, all these substances, we see a donation of a proton. And because they all donate a proton to water, we form the hydronium ion. And the remaining species becomes a conjugate base in which it has one less proton than it did before. And the following reactions are present. Okay, Again, with balancing of equations, not only make sure the number of atoms present are the same on each side, but make sure that the reactions is balanced when it comes to um, charge. Make sure the charges are balanced. You notice on the bottom one here, 
that it's plus one on the left side and it's plus one on the right side. On the one above it, it's neutral on the left and then it's plus one and negative one and therefore it adds up to neutral on both sides as well. So not only is it balance and charge, but it's also balance in atoms as well. All right, and the next thing I want to introduce is the, is the concept of Ka. Ka is called the acid dissociation constant, okay? And Ka is a type of Kc. So just like the previous chapter 15 material, we're going to write it exactly the same way. So a Ka is just simply a type of Kc, which is to what extent, what is the ratio of products to reactants in an acid dissociation? Again, products always go on top. So the hydronium ion will go on top. The chloride ion will also go on top. And again, it's a Kc, so it's a concentration. We'll put it in brackets over the concentration of HCl. Now, all acids are aqueous. All acids are aqueous. Water, however, is a liquid. So whenever we write dissociation equations, remember, solids and liquids are not included. Water will never be included in a Ka expression. It's needed for the dissociation to take place, but it doesn't affect the equilibrium position as to monoproducts compared to reactants. Acids are all labeled aqueous. It's a solute in a solution. Anything labeled with an AQ goes into Ka expressions. So whenever we write a Ka expression, it typically will always show the same thing. It'll be the two ions on top over the weak acid on the bottom. All right, real quickly, go ahead and do the dissociations Ka's for the following reactions. All right, so the first one, again, hydronium and acetate ion are on top. If anything's an ion, it will go into Ka or any Ka expression. And then the acid is a aqueous substance, which is included. The water is not included. Same thing for the last one, water is not included. All the other substances are. Uh, ammonia is aqueous. Again, that'd be something that'd be given to you in the problem. So just be aware of states of matter. Usually the states of matter are given to you. If it's a solid or a liquid, make sure it is not part of the K expression. As I've already said, strong acids or weak acids, if it's a weak acid, you'll see a double-sided arrow. If it's a strong acid, you'll see a single-sided arrow. These tables, okay. Again, who are the strong acids? The strong acids are right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven strong acids, which you had to remember way back in unit two. So this should be a review. Again, just make sure to be aware of who they are. Um, there are seven strong ones. All of the other acids are weak acids. These we assume to be 100% ionized. So when we write a reaction with HCl, it'll be a single-sided arrow because it will completely donate all of its um, hydrogen ions to whatever the base is. Okay? If it's a weak substance, there will be a double-sided arrow between them. One side note about the strong bases. Who are the strong bases? The strong bases are the group 1 metal and pretty much group 2 metal hydroxides. The only group 2 metal that's weak is magnesium hydroxide. Magnesium hydroxide is the only weak, weak base in group 2. So pretty much it's the group 1 and group 2 hydroxides are the strong bases. Every other base is a strong is a weak base. Okay? One last note about this and that is right here. If you are given the K value of a reaction, that will tell you the extent as to how well it dissociates. So if I have a acid like HF plus water in equilibrium with F minus and H3 plus. If it's if it tell if it states to you that Ka is greater than one, what that'll tell you is whenever K is greater than one, product formation is favorable. And therefore, what that would tell you then 
is HF is the acid on the left side. The hydronium ion is the acid on the right side. We would label HF as the acid. The water is the base. F minus is the conjugate base, excuse me. And HRO plus is the conjugate acid. The two acids are the hydronium ion and the HF. If the K of A value is greater than 1, we know product formation is favorable. And therefore, it also tells me something. Since the products are favored, this is the misconception. Students think that they're the stronger ones, and that's not the case. The stronger acid and base form the weaker acid and base. So by K being bigger than 1, I know product formation is favorable. In acid-base equilibrium, it also tells me a second concept, and that is that HF is a stronger acid than HRO+. It would also tell me that water is a stronger base than F- is as well. Both the stronger acid and base are located on the side which is driving the reaction. And therefore, if Ka is bigger than 1, the stronger acid and base will be on the left side, the reactant side. If Ka is less than 1, the stronger acid and base will be on the product side. That is a key takeaway to take away from this information. Okay. One last thing that I like to do here is utilizing the table. So right now, predict if the Ka for this reaction will be, or Kc will be greater than 1 or less than 1. Well, the first thing I want to do is label my acids and bases and my conjugates. So real quickly, pause the lecture and label who the acids, bases, conjugate acid, and conjugate base are. Key takeaway from this lecture. All right, you'll notice that the sulfate has got one less hydrogen than on this side. So that must mean that the HSO4 must have donated the protein this way. So that makes this the acid and this is the base. The acid, when it has one less H+, plus, is now a conjugate base, and the base is a conjugate acid. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the... So I know that HSO4 is a stronger acid than HCO3. I could have also looked up the bases, and I would also have found out that CO3 carbonate ion is a stronger base than the sulfate ion. And therefore, the stronger acid and base are on the left side of the reaction. And they're going to drive the reaction forward, producing the weaker acid and base. And therefore, we would predict that the Kc would be greater than 1 because the stronger acid and base are on the reactant side. So it's going to form a large amount of products. And therefore, the Kc of this reaction will be greater than 1 because there will be more products than reactants at equilibrium. So that's how you can utilize the tables and acid-base strengths to be able to do this. So key takeaways today is just for you to understand what makes an acid, an acid, and a base, a base. Again, it's a donation of a proton. Being able to identify acids and bases in their conjugates is critical. Strong acids completely dissociate. Weak acids only partially. The same thing for bases. And whichever side is favored in a K expression, the stronger acid and base will drive the reaction to form the weaker acid and base. Okay, those are the key takeaways for this uh, packet, and now I'd like you to go ahead and do the homework problems that are found in Canvas after watching this lecture.